Hi, this is Mark Gaylor, Adobe Photoshop Ambassador for the Asia-Pacific region here. And we're going to discuss or uh, feature my top 20 all-time favorite uh, tips and techniques for when working in Photoshop CC. Okay, for top tip uh, number eight, uh, you'll see that I'm using uh, version uh, 2015.5. Now, there was a significant upgrade um, to uh, the compositing workflows. Uh, rather than uh, having an option called Refine Edge or Refine Mask, we now have an option uh, called Select and Mask. And so um, it's an important uh, new upgrade. So I thought I would uh, use this uh, opportunity to highlight this uh, the changes in this particular workflow we don't actually need um, a selection active uh, before going into the select and mask dialog uh, like we did with refine edge or refine mask uh, but I am actually going to make a, an initial selection this is going to be um, a hair extraction composite I uh, we're going to um, uh, uh, put the uh, lovely Alicia here over this uh, sky that I captured uh, in Queensland. Okay, so um, uh, the uh, image of Alicia was captured by the uh, great fashion photographer Ed Panoma. And uh, so let's take a look at this uh, workflow now. I'm going to grab the quick selection tool and I'm also going to click on the auto enhance option there. Now we're just going to go in, I'm just going to increase the size of that selection uh, brush there just by using the close square bracket key um, and now I'm just going to go in and make a selection of Alicia. Now this is a little bit more intelligent than the quick mask, sorry the um, the magic one tool but again it, uh, it is likely to make a few errors in the initial selection. It was doing quite well on the left hand side and then it suddenly lost the plot and decided to select the background there. So I'm going to have to hold down the option key Alternatively, you can click on this subtract icon here and then go in and uh, remove that area from the original selection there. A little bit of work down on the shoulder. You might need to go backwards and forwards a, a few times in order to get a, a good selection of um, any areas that have a low contrast. Typically, uh, if I was um, doing this professionally, I would actually use a uh, pen tool on this hard edge here. Now, if we're going to extract this hair successfully, uh, I don't actually want any areas of transition. Anywhere I can see areas of the old background, so I'm just going to remove move a little bit more where I can see light areas of grey here and I'm going to use a very small brush um, down in the central area here because there's a little bit of uh, area um, down here which has got a little bit of um, uh, background tone and again you can see this is uh, takes a little bit of patience in order to select just the area that I want okay so a little bit of more removing here just on the uh, right hand side and a little bit of the bottom and now pretty much I've got most of the uh, area selected that is 100% Alicia or her hair and none of the old grey background there and now I can actually go into that select and mask dialog okay now this is a much bigger dialog as you can see it's filling my entire screen here okay it's, um, if you're used to the refine edge or refine mask dialog um, you're going to uh, see that there's some new tools around here Okay, um, I'll just, uh, we have a view option here and one of the things that I want to view is on the um, on layers option. This will show me Alicia on the background that's below. Now we have uh, another a new option here called onion skin and we can uh, choose an opacity with how to view that against um, the, uh, the background there. I'm going on to on layers which is pretty much a 100% option there. Okay, um, uh, I'm going to um, uh, select uh, this tool here. This is basically a quick selection tool that we could have used uh, if we hadn't got any selection prior to entering this dialog. I'm just going to drop one down, however, and choose uh, this uh, selection tool called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. Now, this allows me to select any of the areas of transition, and I'm going to have to increase the size of this brush. Okay, so uh, we can do that in the again in the options bar, uh, but I'm using the keyboard shortcut of that square bracket key. Now the important thing with this tool is that we don't move the brush too far into the area that is opaque because this will force partial transparency 
transparency in areas that don't have that partial transparency. So we keep that brush right on the edge and just brush along looking for any of those loose strands of flyaway hair created by that wind machine that Ed Panoma had got going. If you're moving very close to an area that may be close to that shoulder then you might want to decrease that brush that you're working with so we can just get in very close to that shoulder without actually going into that shoulder. I'm also going to use that smaller brush to, to add uh, that small pocket of hair in the um, in the center area there and uh, just increase the size of the brush again in order to work on this right hand side looking for any loose strands of hair that uh, we may have got going there. Okay, so uh, there's quite a lot of hair going over there, I see. She's got very long hair, Alicia. And so that's just coming down, making sure we don't miss any of the hair. And again, trying to keep that brush away from any areas that might be 100% opaque there. Now you can see it's picking up quite a lot of the hair, uh, but to be honest it's not going to do a, a really fabulous job. And I've just spotted a little bit I may have missed there. Okay, so just adding that in. Uh, where we're going to come down is the output settings and we're going to need to expand that dialog to get to the great feature that uh, 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 that makes these uh, hair extractions uh, so good and that is the decontaminate colors option. This used to have an associated slider which we always used to have to drag up to 70 or 80 to see the benefits of clicking on this checkbox uh, but um, in this new uh, revision of this uh, um, dialogue is we actually just got to click on that and we get all of the magic happening without clicking on an associated slider. Slider. Now if you do see any areas that you may have missed you can click on the show edge option okay which just shows you the area where I've been painting okay and you'll see that I have actually missed just a little bit in there and that will just redraw the the maths there okay and I may be a little bit uh, in there as well where I can see some old background showing through and that's a pretty good job there are um, extra adjustments that you can do here but typically if you've got a reasonably accurate selection in the first place um, you're going to find that you don't actually have to do too much work along there um, some people will find that they get a, a better uh, edges uh, along the very sharp edges if they click on the smart radius tool um, and uh, basically you just uh, see whether you're getting a better edge quality on those edges with that smart radius on or off and again uh, we're getting an automated uh, um, raise in that radius typically we have to do that manually in the old refine edge refine mass dialog I'm going to be happy uh, with this option here and select uh, OK uh, in order to commit that and there we have a very quick um, edge um, uh, extraction there. Okay, so that was the select and mask as my top tip uh, number eight.